Robert Brasilic French pronunciation B listen the 31st of March 1909 to the 6th of February 1945 was a French author and journalist Brasilic is best known as the editor of Je suis partout a nationalist newspaper which came to advocate various fascist movements and supported Jacques Doriot After the liberation of France in 1944 he was executed following a trial and Charles de Gaulle's express refusal to grant him a pardon Brasilic was executed for advocating collaborationism, denunciation and incitement to murder. The execution remains a subject of some controversy, because Brasilic was executed for "...intellectual crimes", rather than military or political actions. Biography <inaudible> 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 Born in Perpignan, he studied at the École Normale Supérieure, at the time a school of the University of Paris, and then became a novelist and literary critic for the Action Française of Charles Maurras. After the 6 February 1934 crisis in the Place de la Concorde, Brasilic openly supported fascism. His politics are shared by several of the protagonists in his literary works, notably the two male main characters in The Seven Colors see below. Author Brasilic wrote both fiction and nonfiction. While his fiction dealt with love, life and politics in his era, his nonfiction dealt with a great variety of themes, ranging from drama, great literary figures and contemporary world events. His work in the realm of cinema history was particularly influential. Cinema. Brasilic was fascinated by the cinema and in 1935 co-wrote a detailed critical history of that medium, Histoire du Cinema re-edited in 1943, with his brother-in-law, Maurice Bardache. This work remained the "...most prominent aesthetic history of film for at least a decade." and a work that exerted considerable influence, via its impact on Georges Sadoul who nonetheless disliked the authors until the 1970s. Unlike several other authors and critics of the time, Brasilic did not see cinema through an overtly political lens, although the 1943 re-edition of his work did contain certain anti-Semitic comments not included in the original. Despite being fervent nationalists and personally believing that each nation and people had a unique cinema, the authors instead focused on international trends rather than local particularities. Brasilic frequented Henri Langlois' Cirque du Cinema, cinema circle. His personal tastes are detailed in his major work on cinema and in numerous articles of the period. These tastes ranged from Russian cinema Battleship Potemkin and Alexander Nevsky to classics such as Charlie Chaplin, Georg Wilhelm Pabst, René Clair and Jean Renoir and to certain Hollywood films, such as those of John Ford, Frank Borzage and King Vidor. Brasilic was drawn to originality and explored foreign cinema, and became the first major critic in France to address Japanese cinema, namely Yasujiro Ozu, Kenji Mizuguchi and Hinosuke Gosho. While in prison, he worked on a third edition of his work on cinema and started to adapt a work on Falstaff which he hoped to film with Raimu. <laughs> Politics and wartime activities He became an editor of Je suis partout, a fascist paper founded by dissidents from the Action Française and led by Pierre Gaxet. Brasilic was attracted to the fascistic Riggsist movement in Belgium, and wrote an article and later a book about the leader of the movement, Leon de Grel. Brasilic admired what he perceived to be de Grel's youth and charisma and de Grel's insistence on being neither left nor right, supporting striking workers, encouraging love of God, the king and family and desiring to see the establishment of an anti-communist and anti-capitalist, Christian-influenced corporate state. De Grel went on to collaborate with the German occupation of Belgium and served in the Waffen-SS. Brasilic was also greatly impressed by José Antonio Primo de Rivera and his phalangist movement. By contrast, he described Mein Kampf as a masterpiece of cretinism, in which Hitler appeared to be a sort of enraged teacher. A soldier in 1940, Brasilic was captured by the Germans and held prisoner for several months after the fall of France. At his trial the prosecution alleged that his release was due to pro-German articles written while in captivity. He was freed in early 1941 and returned to his editorial duties at Je suis partout. 
He wrote in favor of the Vichy regime but later embraced a more wholehearted Germanophile policy of collaboration and Nazi policies and criticized the Vichy state. He joined a group of French authors and artists in a trip to meet with German counterparts in Weimar and in November 1942 he supported the German militarization of the unoccupied zone Case Anton under the Vichy government because it reunited France. He visited the site of the Caton massacre, toured the Eastern Front, visited French volunteers and wrote, on his return to France, that he had gone from embracing a collaboration due to reason and rationality to being a collaborator for reasons of the heart. De collaborationiste de raison, je suis devenu collaborationiste de cœur. He called for the death of left wing politicians and in the summer of 1944 signed the call for the summary execution of all members of the French resistance. He considered himself a moderate anti Semite and was replaced as editor of Je suis partout in 1943 by the even more extreme Pierre Antoine Cousteau. He was a member of the group Collaboration, an initiative that encouraged close cultural ties between France and Germany. He went on to work for various journals, including Revolution Nationale and Le Petit Parisien. After the liberation of Paris Brasilic hid in an attic, joking in his diary, Jews have been living in cupboards for four years, why not imitate them? He gave himself up on September 14 when he heard that his mother had been arrested. He spent the next five months in prison and continued his literary endeavors while incarcerated. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Trial and execution. Brasilic was tried in Paris on the 19th of January 1945. His judge had served under Vichy. The prosecutor reiterated Brasilic's vehement antisemitism, linked his praise of Germany and denunciation of the resistance to SS massacres in France and played upon homophobic sentiments by repeatedly drawing the jurors' attention to the author's homosexuality, noting, inter alia, that he had slept with the enemy and approved of Germany's penetration of France. In so doing the prosecution was making hay with Brasilic's own words, as he had suggested, as liberation approached, that France had slept with Germany and would remember the experience fondly. Brasilic was sentenced to death. Brasilic responded to the outrage of some of his supporters then in attendance by saying, It's an honor. The sentence caused an uproar in French literary circles and even some of Brasilic's political opponents protested. Resistance member and author François Mauriac, whom Brasilic had savaged in the press, circulated a petition to Charles de Gaulle to commute the sentence. This petition was signed by many of the leading lights of the French literary world, including Paul Valéry, Paul Claudel, Albert Camus, Jean Cocteau, Colette, Arthur Honegger, Jean Anouy and Thierry Maulnier. De Gaulle did not comply and Brasilic was executed by firing squad in Montrouge. It has been argued that de Gaulle refused to spare Brasilic because the author had on numerous occasions called for Georges Mandel's execution. De Gaulle admired Mandel, a prominent conservative politician who happened to be Jewish, and who was murdered by the Millis during the closing days of the occupation. Brasilic called out, But all the same, long live France. Vive la France quand meme. Immediately before his execution, he was buried in the Cimetière de Chiron in the 20th arrondissement of Paris. His brother-in-law, Maurice Bardèche, was later buried next to him. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Legacy. Brasilic sought to protect his own legacy as his life drew to a close. He composed several works while awaiting trial and execution, including a collection of verse and a letter to French youth of the future, explaining and justifying his actions Lettre un soldat de la classe de soins Lettre, see below. In Lettre he was unrepentant about his fascism, his antisemitism or his wartime activity, although he insisted that he had no idea that French Jews were being sent to their deaths when they were deported. His biographer Alice Kaplan noted that his death made him the James Dean of French fascism, and a martyr to the extreme right. François Truffaut was both aware and appreciative of Brasilic, stating that Brasilic and Pierre Drew La Rochelle shared similar political beliefs and that, views that earn their advocates the death penalty are bound to be worthy of esteem. Dominique Venner's Nouvelle Revue de Histoire has praised the author's intellectual oeuvre. A group called Association des Amis de Robert Brasilic celebrates the author's work and legacy. Cultural references 
The Jean-Luc Godard film Éloge de l'Amour features the recitation of Brasillac's testament, written before his execution. French singer Jan Alexander, born in 1982 in Libreville, Gabon, attacked the author's legacy and celebrated his execution in a song entitled Brasillac 1945. Brasillac is described in Jonathan Little's novel Les Bienvalentes, where he is one of the fellow students of the main character Maximilian Aua. Topic: <laughs> Works. Below is a list of Brasillac's oeuvre fiction, non-fiction and poetry, including posthumous works. Certain works have been briefly summarized. Topic: <laughs> Novels. 1932 Le Voleur d'Étincelles, The Spark Thief, The Stealer of Sparks. 1934 L'Enfant de la Nuit, Child of the Night. 1936 La Marchande de Sceaux, The Bird Merchant. 1937 Comme le Temps Passé, How the Time Passes By, nominated for Prix Femina 1937. 1939 Les Sept Colors, The Seven Colors, nominated for Prix Goncourt 1939. The book begins with the courtship of Patrice and Catherine, two students in Paris in the 1920s. At one point the young couple meet two children, who are also called Patrice and Catherine and who claim to be a couple. His studies completed, Patrice leaves to work in Italy, where he becomes enamored with Italian fascism. Catherine, desiring a more stable relationship, eventually marries a communist she has met at the office where she works, Francois. Patrice leaves Italy and serves a five-year stint in the Foreign Legion, where he befriends a young Nazi. After his time in the Legion, Patrice goes to work in Nazi Germany, where he finds Nazi ritual e.g. Nuremberg rallies, the banners and marches very engaging. Patrice learns from a friend from his Paris days that Francois has become a fascist, having turned from both communism and the Third Republic following the 6 February 1934 crisis in which the extreme right rioted against government, corruption, and perhaps planned to overthrow the state. Ten years after he last saw Catherine, Patrice returns to Paris to visit Catherine and she agrees to go away with him but asks for a few days to collect her thoughts. She decides to stay with Francois instead, but Francois misunderstands and believes she has left him. Francois leaves France without a word and joins the nationalist cause in the Spanish Civil War, where he has a brief encounter with the Nazi Patrice met in the Foreign Legion. Catherine stays faithful to Francois, although she meets a young Frenchman who fought for the Republicans in Spain and who turns out to be the young Patrice she had met while he was a child in the 1920s. Meanwhile, the elder Patrice marries a young German woman. The book ends with Catherine on her way to visit Francois in hospital in Spain after learning that he has been seriously wounded at the front. The title of the book stems from the seven styles in which it is written, a narrative of Patrice and Catherine's time together in the 1920s, letters exchanged between Patrice and Catherine while Patrice is in Italy, Patrice's journal entries while he is in Germany, a series of reflections or maxims, mainly on the process of aging and turning 30, dialogue, in the form of a play, between Francois and Catherine and Catherine. Catherine and Patrice in the mid-1930s, a series of documents Francois has put together in a scrapbook about the Spanish Civil War, and finally a speech Discurs, in which Catherine describes her thoughts as she travels to meet Francois in hospital. The book is very sympathetic to fascism as a regenerating ideology. However, given his future as a collaborator, readers may be surprised that communism and socialism are not attacked outright and that the Patrice Character mentions several times that Nazism may not be as enduring as fascism and that Frenchmen may have to fight the Germans in the future. Also, it is of note that Catherine, who calls herself a petite bourgeoise and who exemplifies French rationalism and perhaps represents France herself, as noted in the dialogue section, chooses Francois, the French, native fascist and turns away from Patrice, who has immersed himself in Italian and German ideology. 1943 Le Conquerante, the Conqueror, gender suggests a female conqueror. 1944 Poems, Poems. 1944 Poems. Topic: Nonfiction. 1931 Présence de Virgil, the Presence of Virgil. 1932 La Prose de Jeanne d'Arc edited and introduced by Robert Brasillac The Trial of Joan of Arc 
1935 portraits. Bars, Proust, Moraz, Colette, Giroudoux, Morand, Cocteau, Malraux, etc., portraits. 1935 re-edited in 1943 Histoire du cinéma, two volumes with Maurice Bardèche. 1936 Animateurs de théâtre, theater directors, organizers. 1936 Léon de Grel et l'avenir de Rex, Léon de Grel and the future of Rigsist party. 1936 Les Cadets de l'Alcazar with Henri Massis, see French Wikipedia The Cadets of the Alcazar, later renamed the Defenders of the Alcazar This short work chronicles the siege of the Alcazar in Toledo by Republican forces in 1936 during the Spanish Civil War. While it lionizes the defenders, Brasilic does not shy from mentioning the execution of the Republican prisoners in Toledo's hospitals after the relief of the city and the Alcazar. The author also discounts certain elements of nationalist propaganda concerning La Pagenaria, communist Dolores Ibaruri. The work remains heavily pro nationalist, with phalangist and Carlist songs reprinted in its pages. 1938 Pierre Cornet, a biography of the famous dramatist. 1939 Histoire de la Guerre d'Espagne, History of the Spanish Civil War. 1941 Notre Avant Guerre. 1944 Les Quatre Judies The Four Thursdays a series of articles about literature, literary figures, trends, politics and society largely published in the press earlier in Brasilic's career drawn from articles often originally printed on Thursdays. <laughs> Posthumously published works 1945 Poèmes de Fresnes 1946 Lettre à un soldat de la classe 60 Letter to a soldier of the class of 1960, in this letter, written while Brasilic was awaiting trial, the author expressed his thoughts and hopes to a future generation. He argued that he had few regrets about his social and political role in World War II era France. He admitted that certain excesses had occurred under the occupation but contrasted the Germans' worst crimes against Frenchmen e.g. Orador sur Glain massacre to the well-documented atrocities committed by the French in their colonial empire, especially Indochina. He reiterated his commitment to antisemitism, although he insisted that he did not know of and entirely repudiated the Holocaust despite having advocated the deportations of French Jewry. In the letter Brasilic insists that Franco-German relations would inevitably continue to improve and that the occupation had ultimately brought the two nations closer together. While these statements would have shocked many at the time, when one considers the rapid rapprochement between the two nations post-war, the general idea of Franco-German unity he expressed in some way presages the development of Franco-German cooperation and the pivotal role of the two nations in the European Community – Union, although the causes of this rapprochement may not have been what he foresaw. Brasilic also reiterated his commitment to fascism and argued that, whether it survived as an ideology or not, the generation of the class of 1960 would doubtless look back on and consider German fascism with a sense of awe. Brasilic also argued that he believed that the spirit of fascism should be mixed with the English sense of liberty and free expression, despite the apparent contradiction in terms. 1947 Chénier, La Pensée Française French thought, 1950 Anthologie de la Poésie Grecque Anthology of Greek Poetry ISBN 2-253-01517-2 1952 Lettre à Christ en prison Letters written in prison 1953 Six Hers à Perdre Six Hours to Kill 1954 Berenice Berenice Play, First Run 1957 1955 Journal d'une homme occupé Journal of an pre-occupied man 1961 Poets oubliés Forgotten poets 1961 Dom Remy 1962 Commentaire sur le Varande Commentary on le Varande 1963 En marge de Daphnis et Chloe On the edge of Daphnis and Chloe 1963 Nouvelle prière sur l'Acropole New prayer on the Acropolis 1967 Acre de Fresnes written at Fresnes 1968 Une génération dans l'orage a generation in the storm 1970 Vinc Lettre de Robert Brasilic 20 letters 1971 Abel Bonnard biography 1974 Les Captifs incomplete novel 1984 Le Paris de Balzac Balzac's Paris 
1985 Hugo et le snobisme révolutionnaire Hugo and revolutionary snobism 1985 Monderland entre les hommes et les femmes Monderland between men and women 1992 Fulger novel compilation 1999 Le question juive articles de Brasilic et Cousteau The Jewish question articles by Brasilic and Cousteau 2002 Relectures Robert Brasilic rereading Robert Brasilic <laughs>